ma NGO una muni kwa ninge wari muno, kwa ninge baada ya kamura iruwa wakati wote kwa familia kutiwa ni muni kwa muno, au chase them away, ni kwa ninge muno muni kwa, they must just do what they profess, what they declare they want to do in this country. We can do without them. Isso tudo por mim, João Gaita Bassa. As my political party don't fear my NGO. Algo que dá um vagabu acha, vagabu a outra não. Vaga não aqui na minha casa. Quer que eu tenha que ir na minha NGO? Não tenho nenhum anabai. De mim a cara não vai poder ela machucar. Não deu a na música, João Gaita. On this, the free talk. This week's conversation opens on a very sad and dark note. One of our guests here on this, the free talk, in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation, Alex Tawanda Magaisa, passed on. We are deeply saddened. We were deeply saddened to hear the news of his death. And we, from this, the free talk, forward our condolences to the Magaisa family and friends. Now, as we go to elections in 2023, laws that are passed during this period in 2022, just a few months or year before the elections, are always viewed with suspicion. And one such law that has come uh, to be viewed with suspicion is the PVO the Private Voluntary Organizations Bill, which is currently being debated in Parliament. This bill is seen as an attempt to remove oxygen in the opposition by the ruling ZANU-PF and government. The opposition has argued that the PVO bill closes democratic space and stifles civil appreciation of laws. But ZANU PF argues that political, that private voluntary organizations are straying into the political lane and must be kept within their own or their preferred areas of expertise, which is development and not politics. Now, this is the free talk. With me, your host, as usual, Dara Blessed Mtla. Join me just after this break. Welcome back to this, the free talk. Now to help me discuss this PVO bill, the controversies around it and the understanding of it, I have uh, polit the political gladiators in this country. I'm joined in studio by um, the deputy spokes spokesperson of the CCC, uh, the Triple C, uh, the new political baby in town, Ostalos Siziwa. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. And I'm also joined by the ZANU PF, the ruling party, the director of information, Tafaz Wamgwadi, affectionately known by his friends and peers as Two Boy. Thank you very much, Tafaz, for coming through. 
wonderful and my pleasure blessing beautiful now i want us to look at the pvo bill um it has been viewed with suspicion but um i, I want us to look at from your point uh tafazo uh what what would be the benefit in the country for us to have a pvo bill uh, in the state that it has been presented oh thank you very much i must say that uh, uh, it is quite clear that the regulations existing at the moment are not sufficient to regulate conduct and to keep civil society within their lane or a chosen lane, as it were. Mind you, government or ZANU-PF or, uh, you know, the people of Zimbabwe, as it were, do not choose what NGO should be formed to do what. They choose themselves. That is why we never formed any organization, any NGO as a party. And uh, I'm sure that goes for, for the other parties as well. Those that formed themselves signed themselves to specific obligations to say if they are going to be an NGO in church organizations, they will do exclusively that. If they are going to be an NGO in terms of uh, a lobby group for workers, in terms of... Uh, uh, rights issues, they must, of course, toe the line prescribed in their chosen area. Now, what we have seen in the past and uh, in the time preceding to, to death is that uh, there has been a deliberate tendency to scuttle, uh, scandalize terms of references, as it were, abandoned their chosen path as NGOs, and delving into uncharted territories of political contestation. Now, the laws of this republic are very clear. If you want to engage in politics, you know what to do. If you want to be a non-governmental organization by way of, you then need to be uh, specifically that. It is quite said that uh, the NGOs must take responsibility for inspiring discussions around these amendments to take place. Had they chosen to stay within their lane, I'm sure we could have been moving very well like that. But what we've also seen, it is also good to characterize the environment, blessed. You will not be here and disagree with me that uh, uh, these NGOs, a majority of them are funded by foreigners outside of the Republic. And the foreign powers funding them are well exposed and known to us. You know them too, those countries. The reasons why they are funding NGOs are not exactly to do what the NGOs have said they seek to do. That is why you find NGOs doing or engaged in political fighting with other political players. It is wrong that way. Uh, that's why you are finding non-governmental organizations also in abuse of donor funds, is it way? You know that. And I'm sure headlines have been written also here involving certain civil society players, NGOs, buying leafy houses and stains in suburbs, abusing money or generosity of certain people outside of this country who have given them no money for specific function. That money remains unaccounted for. Some of the money has also found itself in the hands of political players and civil society NGOs are being, not all of them, but some are being abused and used as funding bells or conveyor bells and conduits of certain money that is being uh, pumped into the country to fund regime change or fund political contestation. It is wrong because NGOs must not do that. I must uh, uh, say this here that uh, sitting here, blessing, you might also need to know that uh, I also used it to lead an NGO in the trade union of students, ZNAS. And what I'm talking about, I know what I'm talking about. I'm sure going forward into this discussion, if there are denials to what I've preliminary given as a testimony, I'll go into the details of what, what used to happen. And uh, I do so without uh, seeking to blackmail anyone, but to speak the truth as we have seen it. And those things need to be correct. So the Bill 6 to regulate the conduct and to ensure that civil society play their role according to what they've prescribed, errand elements will be flushed out. 
And those who have been working well and staying true to their land and doing exactly what they chose to do, they are not unaffected and they are not making any cries. They are not even making any lamentations about the bill. Okay. Also, mm -hmm. in person, the lamentations about the PVO bill amendments are coming from embassies, and one of them is the British embassy. They have spoken to me about their lamentations. I've also heard the U.S. speaking their lamentations about it and tweeting about it. The same with the Canadian embassy. And I have not heard anything from other NGO players in this country. I've not heard anything from Youth Agenda Trust. I've not heard anything from uh, Yides. I've not heard anything even from Zinasa at the moment. But I've heard everything from embassies. And the question is, why are foreigners taking the front seat in opposing this bill? Okay, we'll come, we'll come back to you. But I want to give an opportunity to, to Australis uh, also to give his uh, preliminary remarks. Um, what is the view of the CCC on this bill and what benefits or lack or thereof benefits if this bill is to see the day of light? Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, my brother. Um, the Citizens Coalition has made its uh, a position very clear. We have expressed it through our statements. We have expressed it through our engagement in Parliament where this bill is being debated. We have argued and continuously submitted unequivocally that the private voluntary bill um, seeks uh, to achieve the following. Number one, uh, it is submitted by the proponents of the bill that number one, we must deal with possible funding of terrorist uh, organizations who seek uh, to achieve um, unconstitutional removal of government. Number two, they've argued that money is being laundered in the country and therefore there is need uh, to regulate the existence of private voluntary organizations with the intention to make sure that um, you know, we save our, you know, um, institutions from that particular conduct. And we have argued very clearly that we hear the submissions, the proponents of the bill, as they say, outside the political rhetoric that was given by some members of parliament, which I think were very um, shallow in submission, um, and I don't think that for me would have dealt with the submissions that are extremely political, as was proposed by uh, some of uh, the members of parliament. I think that these substantive views, because these ones have been put concretely on the document, and are what we've engaged at the level of legal and intellectual discourse, and we've argued on the following, that number one, there is sufficient um, 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 laws in this country that can be able to deal with these alleged uh, challenges. Number one, there is the Criminal um, Codification Act in this country, which regulates possible criminalities by any organization or individual or voluntary association. Number two, there is an act in this country that governs uh, money laundering activities. I think it's called the uh, Act on Money Laundering and so forth. Number three, there is actually an act in this country that also governs possible activities of terrorist institutions or those that are associated with terrorist organizations. There is also a law in this country. These are acts of parliament codified into law in this country that governs possibility of money laundering within the banking sector by individuals or institutions. And we believe as Citizens Coalition for Change that there is sufficient law in this country that can regulate what is said to be the issues that must be addressed by the private voluntary associations. And that as it may be, it is our belief as a citizens coalition for change that what is not said about this bill is that the bill's intention and objective is to thwart institutions whose role are safeguarded and protected for by the constitution which is advocacy work to hold the government to account. We believe that if we introduce the private voluntary um, uh, bill, the problem that comes with that, it means that the independence, the autonomy of non-governmental organizations and civil society organizations 
whose objective and mandate is to hold public officials to account is thwarted. And we believe that it makes government unaccountable. It makes the accounting role of different sectors of society to be limited. I am conscious, we are conscious as Citizens Coalition for Change, that there are challenges within existing certain institutions. We don't believe, and let it be known, that a Citizens Coalition for Change, we don't believe that non-state actors must be involved in political affairs, like the media, like uh, uh, non-governmental organizations, and so forth. Every, pe every person and institution must stick to their task. And that defines roles and responsibilities. And we believe that government must not escape the key role of civil society to hold government to account by thwarting its existence. Number two, we differ with the procedural outlook of the bill. Because it argues and submits that uh, 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 there must be a creation of another bureaucratic institution in this country called... Uh, the PVO registrar's office. When there's already a ministry that has been doing with registration of these private voluntary associations, we don't believe that there must be a further addition into a rotted, bloated government system, a bureaucratic office, which we know. You know of what is happening in the registrar's office. If we live here and go there, these institutions of government have been subjected to abuse by government bureaucrats, and further aiding that would mean that there will be further loopholes, again, to what is perceived to be the solution. So we don't think a citizen's coalition for change. There must be another bill which tries and attempts to regulate the existence. The submissions and argument are legitimate that we must deal with money not in but there's a sufficient law. There's a sufficient act of parliament that deals with certain criminal conduct of institutions and individuals within non-governmental organizations, within government, within parastatals, within the public service, which must be effectively used. So we must be dealing with how to make sure that the criminal law in this country is sufficient enough, is made to bite. The prosecution process in this country is made sufficient so that we deal with these allegations. So we don't believe that unless there is an ulterior political motive of this bill, but otherwise, we believe that what has been put at the bill as the reasons for and in support of the bill are already covered by the existing legislation in this country. Amazing. Um, now, I'm just going to um, go to, to um, the, the reading of parliament and uh, what happened in parliament in the ninth, uh, ninth, uh, in the fourth session of the ninth parliament of Zimbabwe. Now, uh, here um, um, it says that... Um, the bill is supposed to uh, be criminalizing the involvement of PVOs in politics. is meant to remind them of their core mandate, that is for developmental purposes rather than to support or oppose, oppose political parties or candidates or finance a political party or candidate. Now, uh, Mr. Mgwadi, or Comrade Mgwadi, um, is ZANU PF? running scared of, of political opposition because this bill appears to firmly be dealing with saying PVOs should not get into politics. Uh, the way you have framed your question is clear that you acknowledge that uh, civil society and GOs and, you know, have not been sticking to their roles and that is why you are saying we, are, we should be afraid that they will be supporting the opposition. No, I'm just reading this. Yes, of course. Mm. Now, what I should tell you is that, uh, uh, like my brother, I think maybe just borrowed one or two from what he has said. Uh, no person in this country, by operation of the supreme law of the land, which is the Constitution, is prohibited from engaging in political activities or participate in politics. No person. But it is one thing to seek to participate. It is another thing to try to hide behind a finger and form clandestine organizations organized under the banner of NGOs. And then people get railroaded into fighting political battles or political contestations that are not within 
the province of their responsibility or the constituents of their operation, as it were. My brother says there are sufficient laws. I will tell you, uh, Ostalos, at law, what normally happens with the regulations is that uh, you will agree with me, say, for example, we have a marriage act in this country. It defines what rape is by way of statutory uh, age. Now it has been put on 18. But it doesn't mean that the Constitution of the Republic doesn't provide or it doesn't criminalize rape. We have the, the criminal law, Codification and Reform Act. It criminalizes rape. But we have a, a child act which is very clear about what, uh, and it defines in clear terms so that perpetrators or will be perpetrators must, will not be left guessing on whether they are committing a crime or not. So the PVO uh, amendment bill, my brother, seeks to consolidate those regulations to ensure that one, you agree with me, in 2008, I'll give you an example, because then I was an activist, student activist, bless you. We had an organization called uh, Zim Rights, where the organization is called the Crisis Coalition uh, in Zimbabwe. Now they call it a Crisis in Zimbabwe Coalition. It has just uh, twisted the names. I will just mention those two among the rest that were involved. I was an active student activist at the University of Zimbabwe. There were elections. Do you know that the teachers that were inscribed, uh, Tineti and Katali, uh, 29 March, let's go and run over, 31, uh, 30 June or something like that, they were printed at crisis coalition offices that were just next to CMED in Belvedere. And uh, I witnessed that happening, and I also received some, and I was responsible for distributing some of them in favor of then Morgan Changrai after the first round of elections. That's number one. Uh, that alone, nothing happened to crisis coalition because the laws as they exist now were not quite very clear about what happens in the event uh, that uh, people have crossed the path. Now it is clear that either six months, three months, or nine months, or a length imprisonment or a fine of this magnitude. They should be, the good laws must be very clear so that those who trespass or who violate the laws knows exactly what should be before them. On top of that, the registrar you're talking about, uh, uh, Ostalos, we already have the ministry that has been doing that, but we are now seeking to consolidate that within the office of the registrar responsible exclusively for that from morning to the next, to seven days a week, uh, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, let's say, or working hours a day. So there is no civil society organization or NGO or a church organization which is classified as a, as a PVO that will be disenfranchised from existing but that it becomes incumbent on them to exist within the confines of their existence. In 2019, the president is having a, a, a global tour of the Eurasia, five nation tour, violence erupt in this country. What do you see? The reported involvement of organizations like CSU, Counseling Service Unit, running safe houses and, uh, uh, you know, running houses where people were supposedly uh, kept hostage to be released to unleash an ogre violence that you saw between 14 January and 16 January 2019. Civil society organizations were involved. Crisis coalition in Zimbabwe was reported, reportedly involved. And it's then director Rashid Mahia had to rush to South Africa escape the borders and rush to South Africa. But his organization was involved, as was reported by the law enforcement agents then. Now, it has been difficult to prosecute those typical crimes because the laws have not been quite very sufficient and clear. A good law must be clear. So, so the idea around this bill is to prosecute? It is not to prosecute, it is to regulate the conduct of NGOs. And so that where they transgress, they know what to falls on them. Okay, let me let me let me come to let me come to you. Um uh, still on the on the same issue. Um now uh the pol uh, have you you know because uh, uh, uh director of Zanu P after Fazongwadi speaks of a personal experience where PVOs were used to support the opposition under uh Morgan Changrai. 
which is a party that gives birth to you even if you are a new political party now what is your relationship with these pvos and are they supporting you politically that if this law comes into effect your oxygen is um is taken away from you look um we're a democratic party we are governed and driven by democratic ethos our behavior and conduct is informed by our values one of our key values as an alternative is freedom. Freedom in its absolute sense. And we have argued against the bill, informed by ideological standpoint. Our core value is justice, freedom, and solidarity. And it's nothing informed by personal experience. It's nothing informed by personal persuasions. It's an institutional position informed by our values. Our values which are interlinked directly with the provisions of the Constitution. And we have said it very clear that government by this uh, private voluntary association, as my brother Mugwali would say, is clear, it's clear to me that it intends to close democratic space. It intends, as he says, to consolidate, to close down democratic space by weaponizing the law against those who offer criticism to government. I don't believe that non-governmental organizations, in my view and knowledge, and institutionally as a party, we don't believe that non-governmental organizations um, must have their rights extremely controlled. The, its behavior and conduct and must be regulated by law. It's very clear. It's, it's there in the law, as I've argued in my uh, uh, submissions earlier. And, I, and, and I've said, and we've said very clear that we think that the existing law is sufficient. The clarity that my brother is talking about is actually, in my view, directly attacking democratic consent and tries to escape government's task to be accountable to citizens. Because these organizations exist to call government to order. If the state unleashes violence against defenseless citizens, it is, the trust of, it is the task of those who formed specifically for the mandate to question the activity and behavior and conduct of government, to call the government to order, or to question why government reached such a decision. That's why when there was violence in January in this country, in fact, the violence of uh, uh, July in 2018, there was a commission. <coughs> the commission said was to investigate a a well-documented, visibly seen conduct of government. And it is born out of public pressure by institutions representing the public to question the behavior and conduct of government that necessitated government to initiate such process like a commission, to initiate such process like an inquiry. If there is a political or an economic scandal in our country, citizens through private voluntary associations will question the existence of government to say all oh, the behavior of government leading to institutions of government to react in a certain particular manner and fashion to say look there's an allegation of a corruption activity in central government or in a certain department and government investigates that's why commissions are set that's why the anti-corruption commission is there and other organs of government but they react to revelations by the public or institutions who are interested in that particular subject in our polity. So I don't believe that it is criminal. I don't believe that it's offensive. And, and I want to quote ZANU-PF uh, Chief Whip, whom I believe represents ZANU-PF's position in Parliament. The Chief Whip of ZANU-PF said when he proposed the enactment of the private uh, voluntary uh, uh, organization bill, he says that there are political institutions, there are political parties who have invited uh, suffering to our country. There are organizations who go and speak bad about our government in foreign platforms. And we think that, in fact, he didn't say about government because there is a distinction, as far as I know, between government and political parties. I don't believe that uh, if someone says bad about citizens' coalition for change and we're in government, they're speaking bad about the party. 
because there must be no conflation of the two uh, separate institutions. And the chief whip of ZANPF said there are people who speak bad about ZANPF. And those people must be criminalized. And he <coughs> raised clearly the intentions of members of ZANPF who are in parliament who have supported the existence of the bill. That we don't want people to go out of the country and speak bad, not about government, but speak bad about ZANPF. That is what he said in parliament. And I believe that it's so revealing that at least for ZANPF, at least for members of parliament from ZAN, the intention and objective is to criminalize criticism against ZANPF. It's, a, it's criminalize anyone who dares question the existence of government. And that's why they've moved the motion to make sure that bill is passed into law and uh, that there is criminalization of those that speak bad about ZANPF and to some extent about government. Uh, so, Director Mgwadi, I want to come, I want to, come to this point. Um, can development happen without politics? Well, uh, let me, just before I deal with that issue, address what uh, my brother in brief said, uh, Ostalos, uh, you must, uh, in fact, let's distinguish between the desire to spool hot air and the responsibility to speak the truth and facts. This act, I mean, this, these amendments do not seek to stop transparency in the national Zimbabwe to require that government be transparent and open in its engagements and be accountable. This bill does not stop your human rights and go forum from seeking or speaking about human rights as it were. It doesn't seek to do that. It doesn't even seek to stop the organizations, the NGOs, from engaging government at every level, or anyone whatsoever. It stops them, or seeks to stop them, from engaging in nefarious political activities directed or anchored at undermining other political competitors, undermining government in the process, and also engaging, the possibility of engaging in either terrorist or quasi-terrorist mm -hmm. engagements like, for example, mm -hmm. the violent demonstrations that my brother knows, the opposite. You know, in the, do you know that uh, there are times, I'll give you an example of the events that we saw on, on 1 August. Mr. Chamisa said those who demonstrated were stupid and that is part of the MDC alliance then was not responsible. He also said the same statement between 14 and 16 June 2019 that uh, the party or no opposition political party claimed the responsibility of the violent protests that were taking place. Now, who, how did we then get to where we were, where property was destroyed, where police vehicles were banned, buildings assaulted, and people frog marched to join demonstrations, being beaten out you know, by, by, by those rogue elements. No one owns them. At least now you agree with me. No one owned them. But it's because... Are the second see, suspect was that those see, who own them. Are you saying that people, by their very nature, uh, they would uh, protest against government and going to the streets being owned by someone and not will do that by themselves? When I'm saying owning, I'm saying, you know, we do have laws in this country that speaks to how demonstrations are conducted, at least according to Section 50. You, are, you, you, you seek the... the the notice from the regulating authority, which is the Zimbabwe Public Police, isn't it? That is done to ensure that you can in the process of doing what the conveners will be held responsible. Isn't it that simple? The laws are very clear about it. So I'm saying no one owned these processes or owned the process that were taking place at the, as it were. It's because there was violence. So, but people are among the time you could donate we can't play game. We can't play cat and mouse games with, with the state. Where the state is going to know? Dear no white is what ah this is what this is. But statements were being uh, written to magnify or call for violence. You know that NGOs have been calling for violent protests in this country. You know that. Just recently, you had those unregistered organizations like Pachel doing the same. On the they aborted the shutdown that never was, that failed. Not only them. You have had them do, the other NGOs doing that. And they say, they organizing under the banner that 
let's go and do a final push or let's go and remove the government. Ah, so and so must go. You have seen that blessing. Now we're saying, can all NG uh, NGOs formed to do that? Certainly not. What should they do? Do exactly what they are formed for. Mm. Where they cross, they trespass on the law. Where they violate regulations. They must be also accountable. It's one thing, my brother, to want government to be accountable, to want public officials to be accountable. It is also another thing to be accountable yourself. Are these organizations accountable? They should be accountable. And in the process, no one will stop them from releasing their statements for on areas where they have seen things bad happening. But also what is eking them, blessed, I think the public needs to know. You know, Stalos, we know our brothers and sisters that, are, that were fortune seekers hiding in these organizations that have made so much money. We'll not talk to, I wouldn't want to talk about their names because I would have wanted to do so if they were here. And in this, I don't seek to tarnish or blackmail. I will speak facts. Some were even investigated by donor organizations. I will tell you, Ostalos, you know, there were individuals that were investigated by USAID, there were individuals that were investigated by OSISA, Open Society for Institute of, Institute of Southern Africa. There were donors that were, in, no, there were organizations that were invest, investigated for abuse of funds and corruption in these NGOs by those that had funded them. And you know that the crisis in Zimbabwe coalition, which is a loudmouth organization among them, had to have a spell of nearly five years without any single dollar from those donor partners they have. Reasons being abuse of funds that happened at the previous executive, I will not talk about the name. So I'm saying, it is one thing for these organizations to want to speak so much about accountability, but without, it is wrong to have themselves escape accountability. So no one will stop them from doing what they need to do, but the amendments requires that also the minister responsible for the register take responsibility to see the funds, that the funds they have received have been put to good use. Kanamuri and Jom Kapuama is good, hundred, Boran hundred. It would be good for those intended by those donations to see Boran hundred. Wakazona is Boran twenty. The minister responsible through the structures put in place must investigate to see to it that the, those who were involved in corrupt tendencies that resulted in people receiving twenty donated balls where they were supposed to receive hundred. Ah. But, 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 uh, but um, my question, I, I want you to answer my question. Can development happen without politics? Well, I'd, it depends on what you call politics. Politics is ubiquitous, isn't it? It is ubiquitous. And in that sense, development, yes, uh, can take place with or without politics. Because development is action-oriented. But accept that those leading in the process of development must be informed by political persuasions. The politics that allows people to participate. The politics that allows people to express themselves freely. The politics that allows people to benefit from the conduct of those requ requested to spearhead development. So, so there is a nexus between the two. You cannot escape one, yeah. one of the other. But in our context, I, that's why the president says politics must take the best, the back seat. The economic, o o economics occupy the front seats. Development should be a priority. In this sense, we mean once we normally have heightened political contestations ahead of elections, isn't it? Vicious heightened political contestation, yes. yes. After elections, elections are done, dusted. Let's focus on development. Yes. Both the contestants, the winners, the losers, all of us, let's focus yeah. on my, development. My, my, yeah, my, my, my question would be when you say that PVOs uh, must stay out of politics but focus on development. How do you do that? Because, because politics is who gets what, when, and where. And development is who gets what. So how do you separate development from politics? I, I, want, I want us to address that. Well, let me, I think you didn't hear me properly. You didn't get me properly. You know, if you look at the standard, if you want to apply the standard rule, across jurisdictions, in, across the republics, across the world. The standard rule of operations of NGOs, blessed it, is that we have laws that govern the political parties and conduct of political parties, isn't it? Mm. And one of them is the Political Parties Finance Act, which prohibits foreign funding of political parties, isn't it? Directly or indirectly, isn't it? 
But that act does not stop NGOs from receiving donations by, from foreign powers or by, 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 by foreign organizations to do developmental work. What is then wrong when we say they must stop delving into issues of political contestation? It is a situation where crisis in Zimbabwe coalition receives donations from USAID as it were, or its partners in millions. Those millions find themselves at Harvest House at Monzora's party or in the banana faction of the MDC. And that money is being used into electioneering. Already violated the regulations on Political Finances Act, isn't it? It is clear. Number two, you have also abused the donation which was aimed at certain activities. If it is advocacy work, you want people to know their rights to register to vote. NGOs are allowed to do that. We have organizations like ZESNI, ERC, educating people to register to vote. They are not registering people to vote for A. They are saying it is your right to vote. That is where the ceiling is. They must stop there. That is the standard rule that applies across jurisdictions. But what we have here is abuse of that standard rule. Because we say everyone is a right to engage in politics. As an individual, yes, but don't abuse organizations and donations coming on their way to fund political activities. You are misdirecting the, 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 the donations. Sorry, uh, you're oh, eating to, so to speak. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me assist my brother to understand um, uh, these issues. Um, number one, um, a well-known fact is that uh, government at this present juncture is escaping accountability. That's number one. Number two, the criminalization of these uh, organizations, as I've said, he mentioned, I'm happy he mentions the Political Parties Finance Act, which regulates uh, funding of political parties. It's very clear that who should fund political parties, to what extent, and so forth. It's very clear. And it answers the question of how uh, these NGOs exist vis-a-vis -vis the existence of political parties. And the clarity now, while this government would want to say they are, fi they are fighting against uh, people doing money laundering, the well-known fact is that money, this country, as I'm speaking to you, has been identified as the money laundering center in the African continent. The government has made a deliberate program to open our country, not for business, but for money laundering. The, there are shocking reports. Some of them are going to come out about the money laundering activities happening at the behest of the government presided over by Mr. Mnangako. Do you know that Henry Rushua was caught in the airport of this country trying to uh, externalize gold, trying to move uh, out of this country with gold? Criminal activities. But where is Andrew Shaw right now? She's throwing parties and banquets in the, in the country. Do you know that the Reserve Bank has been used through its a, a, a bogus auction system to finance illicit economic activities in this country? Surely, the priorities of government are extremely misplaced. How does a government be worried about 10,000, which was laundered by a crisis, or 100,000? When there are billions siphoned out of this country, at the behest of government, a criminal activity is happening. The Auditor General's report and institutions of government. Are, are you admitting that there's 10,000, 100,000? No, no, I mean, it's, it's what you said. I don't work for those organizations. I don't speak on their behalf. I'm saying the priorities of government, by the revelations by my brother, are extremely mis misplaced. It's, and it's very shocking because money is being laundered out of this country. Government officials are stealing public funds. You know of the Pomona scandal that is happening at this junction. They're trying to siphon from the taxpayers. They are stealing from taxpayers. And the pride of government is that no, they're organized. It's clear. This thing is political. If you hear my brother's submissions, it's about them uh, perceived to be supporting the opposition. It's about them said to be supporting a party that is against them. But are they not supporting? They are not supporting. Because uh, we, in the past, in, in the past, we have seen, we have seen, we have seen, we have seen a lot of uh, your candidates uh, being springed 
into uh, governance structures or political structures using donor funds. Um, you had uh, Gordon Moyo, who was the head of Blawayo Agenda, uh, you know, springing himself from Blawayo Agenda to lend look, to. Look, we, look, also look, have, look, we, we also have. We also have Love Mumaduku from the NCA uh, to politics. So, uh, look, uh, a transition. Look, there's a transition. Human transition is a political right for anyone. The law in this country does not say if you belonged to a Roman Catholic or the Apostolic Faith Mission of Africa. You can't have a transition from your a, a church. That, that is actually, for me, very shocking that we might say because of someone's past, someone can't participate in politics. But Everyone has got a right to have a transition from wherever they I don't speak on behalf of God and more. I don't speak on behalf of... Uh, uh, the other person that you have uh, but, but mentioned. You, but you I speak on behalf of it, it, the uh, uh, Citizens Coalition. Mm -hmm. and, and I've said, I've made substantive argument on the existence of the private, uh, uh, the public uh, uh, voluntary organization bill. That, as I've said to you, the bill is insufficient to put substantive argument that uh, there must be reg further, not that there must be regulation, further regulation of private voluntary associations in this country. As I've said to you, the proponents of the bill, as they've made their submissions, read the parliamentary report, they give three substantive arguments, which I've said, number one, the, their first argument is, 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 is covered for by the Political Parties Finance Act. NGOs are not allowed to fund political parties, whether they are funding ZANU, but they, 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 are, they are funding uh, 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 CCC. They are not allowed to do but that. But they do if, that? If, if, if they are doing so, there is already a political party finance that governs the funding of political parties. And I've made this very clear, <coughs> that there is a law regulating the funding of political institutions. Why should we go further? Now the PVO bill does not deal with funding of political parties. It deals with the right for private voluntary associations to be answerable to the minister in terms of their activities. What are their activities? He mentions crisis in Zimbabwe coalition. They are human rights coalition. They directly work in the human rights sector. When the government is the number one violator of human rights, what should the coalition do? Should the coalition sleep? When the government of Mr. Mnangagwa is the number one violator of human rights, is the government known in record as was submitted in the Montlando Commission firing live bullets on peaceful protesters or on protesters as it were who should question it should uh, the election resource center question the conduct of government in relation to human rights certainly no because their role their terms of reference is in relation to elections their terms of reference is not in relation to question power so government is targeting precisely these institutions whose terms of reference and mandate as defined by their deeds of trustees, regulated and accepted by the Ministry of Public uh, uh, Labor uh, Welfare, which they are registered for. These organizations are part and parcel of a healthy democracy. The government must be questioned. Who must question the government? When the government steals from the public, who must question it? It is certainly ordinary people. How can ordinary people question government? They belong to private voluntary organizations and they agree. That's why when you see these institutions issuing their statement bull, they've got signatories of people who are represented in that organization. Because I can't, yes, of course, an individual has a local standard to go to court, to go and question government. But people do so through associations. We express ourselves in terms of our displeasure against government by joining a political party. So that our objective is to attain political power and govern differently. But we do so through associating with a movement whose objective and agenda is to attain political power. So people, ordinary people, who loses their money, being stolen by government, being stolen by government officials, from the top to the bottom of government bureaucrats, they are stealing public funds. And people want to question it. They question them through these associations, labor movements, unions, and so forth. And government directly criminalizes these particular institutions, as I've said, they've argued through their chief whip, uh, Mr. Togarib, honorable with respect, that anyone who dares say bad things about ZANU-PF must be criminalized. What is the objective? The objective is political. So people can't question ZANU. 
So people can't question government. That we can't do. I don't belong to private voluntary organization. But I can't accept that as an individual. I must question and speak truth to power, irregardless of the consequence. So this is what is happening. The intention and objective, as I've said, is political. It's nothing legal. It's nothing bureaucratic. It's nothing to do with regulating the existence of institutions. As, the, as I've said, there is sufficient regulation in this country. There are sufficient laws and acts of parliament that govern the behavior, the conduct, the culture about institutions. Because when you go to, and I want to uh, uh, also put this to, uh, to record, when you want to register a private voluntary bill, you come up with a bill. You come up with a, a trusted deed. That defines who you are. That defines clearly, succinctly, your objective. If our objective as a private voluntary association is to make sure that we monitor a uh, human rights situation in the country, if we make sure that we hold those who are elected in government to account, and we go to government, we register, they read our, our, our objectives, they pay, make us pay that this is the cost of you to register in this country, in the this office. You register. You become an organization, recognize, you get your address, they know where you are. If there is any act of criminality in the organization, the existence of the uh, a police are there to make sure that any criminality is investigated and prosecuted. People are taken to court and you, have, you might want to give examples if you have come across any of people's criminal activities in certain institutions. And once that happens, it means that Government is happy to regulate through the existing legislation, the existence of non-government organization. But here is a bill whose intention, as I've said, my brother, let's debate the content. The intention is about advocates. The intention is about questioning political. The intention is about the perceived view by government and ZAN that if any non-governmental organization questions government, Government doesn't want to account and thinks that will, that will lead to its loss of power. So it's a clear, deliberate intention of power retention, power accumulation, closure of democratic space, closure of democratic consent, consolidation of fascist uh, behavior by ZANU-PF, as we have uh, seen uh, from this uh, proposed bill. I, I, I see you, you want to respond. I'll, I'll allow you to. I'm not in there, honey. Because there is no fact coming from my brother. Like I said, it's just a hot air. You say government is stealing money, officials are stealing money, or government from top to bottom. Quite very much unsubstantiated hollow claims that you cannot point any instant to. And of course, above that, you know, he says the bill is aimed at ZANPF is seeking power retention through the bill. How do we seek to retain power from the, the NGOs? If I were to, to ask him, it's quite unfortunate he's incriminating organizing the NGOs themselves, which he seeks to defend, by apportioning blame to them that they seek to remove Zanpe from power. We only had that as a suspicion. We didn't have as a, that as a fact. You have just confirmed it when you say Zanpe seeks to retain power from NGOs. We never thought we were in any competition with those NGOs. We simply thought that they were there to do their things, except when they cross the line, the regulations are just uh, coming out very clear. I must also point out to, to my brother to say, uh, the PV oil bill will transform into an act, and I know you know what that means. The NGOs that are ready, and that have always been ever ready, and doing things genuinely, We've never had any complaints from them. Like I said earlier on, blessed, the lamentations we have received are coming from <laughs> the supposed beneficiary of the illicit activities of those NGOs. That's their political party. He denies uh, that uh, you know, NGOs have never funded the opposition or that. Uh, I must say, he should have simply said he doesn't know. Doesn't know in the sense that uh, by the time some of us were uh, active political animals. That's around 2006, I'm sure then, if he wasn't nursing his adolescence elsewhere, then he was still learning to crawl. We were leaders of students' unions uh, then. And what we have spoken and what I'm saying, Ostalos, is a fact if you consult with your peers. The MDC existentially was funded through NGOs, including NGOs in farming uh, uh, fraternity. 
like a CFA, you know, not the commercial farmers and so forth and so on. These things existed. So the law is just coming in with these amendments to say, let us straighten the ruler so that no one deviates and say he was not aware. You talk of the Mushandi Commission and you talk about uh, 1 August. You say, it's quite shocking that you say that there was uh, a brow with the peaceful protesters. I don't know whether this is an attempt to, re to try to own them. You have had a tendency of owning the mischief makers of 1 August when it is convenient, when you want to play victim mode. When it comes to all the activities they were doing, you throw them under the bus and call them stupids. It is quite unfortunate. And it is this mischief which the NGOB must seek to address. Those who are responsible will be found responsible. They bent Zampi of offices at uh, 4th Street there, us on the buses and they were burning down. You know what they were doing until they were closing on to the National Election Command Center at Rainbow there, where there were diplomats and the other foreign dignitaries who were set to fall victim to them. And then a lot of things happen. Today you call them peaceful protesters. It is not surprising when he calls them that blessing. It is the mischief, the similar mischief we have seen from those NGOs who are crying foul. They have been caught pants down. They have been found in Epping. The rules are coming. Also on top of that blessing, those who were corrupt using these NGOs, I must tell you something recently which was quite interesting. It's good to share and reflect about it. Because that's the environment which this bill seeks to, to, to amend. Mazuai wa yo ostalos. Munu wanguda kuta marwai fu machu organization wote inda umayemba zu madonna, uto dia, dia. And the crisis coalition being desirous to be seen to have a, a, a majority membership for, for organizations. It will go to for majabu, you for majabu, and people were organizations that to say to themselves. They are also known in the civil society today that uh, some even we share lighter moments together, drinks and so forth, enjoying, we laugh at it. They are organizations as individuals. They don't have membership, they are desktop and laptop activists. Now I don't know if I can to cover actually this summer statement that I'm back working. And the 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 the, the manner in which you attack government irresponsibly gets your access to donor money. We know these things, we, we see it. But, but you may also need to know that this bill does not speak of ZANPF in any way. How you have found out that it seeks to address ZANPF's concerns, I don't know. But all that I'm saying is those who want others to be accountable must themselves demonstrate accountability and must not try to escape or run away from accountability. If the Director. regulations are the same, Director. so why are we crying forward? Director. Let just them be consolidated within an, a, a single mm -hmm. act and those who are bound by them must be deserving to be bound by clear rules which then they must seek to violate or to observe. Director. The consequences Director. Of Director. You, you, you said that, um, uh, in your preliminary remarks, you said that uh, most of these uh, PVOs that are making noise are receiving money from the United States, uh, from, from, from um, uh, embassies or countries that you say are opposed to uh, the regime in Haran. Mm -hmm. But um, this, the same regime that, that you say is opposed by this, especially USA, that you have mentioned quite a number of times, receives money from USA for its for for the funding of government activities. Like what? Uh, we have seen uh, government uh, 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 receiving money for the f fight of corruption through the courts. Yes, the EU is actually in partnership with ZAC um, uh, to fund and help uh, the establishment of of uh, of of, uh, of corruption courts and uh, you know. There is a memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. um, we we have seen USAID has funded uh, through PEPFA and stuff like that. Our health system, uh, that is government. Why is it a problem when the same government of the United States gives money to NGOs? It's it's it's, it's seen as a threat to 
to the independence of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. But when the same money comes to government, it's seen as development. I just want you now, to explain. Thank you very much. I think uh, your question was, uh, you, 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 you have a distorted understanding of for the realities. In this case, governments across the world fund them each other differently by loans, by donations to other governments or government institutions, they sit <laughs> And the governments borrow money from each other, isn't it? <laughs> but <laughs> you must uh, stop confusing the uh, government of Zimbabwe receiving money or an institution of government as it were receiving money from a, a, a foreign funding partner. It's different. That is not Zanpev receiving money from a foreigner. You get what I'm saying? Because the laws in this country are very clear on political parties, finance, act. I didn't say Zanpev. I said when it's given to government, yeah, that's what I'm use it as you cannot it. Right, but, no, no. but if it's if it's given to NGOs, you view it as destabilizing. Well, but the same, the, but the money is coming from the same pocket. So I wanted that that clarity. How do you separate? Actually, it? there is no similarity between the things that you are trying to mm -hmm. compare. Mm -hmm. You can compare the interests of a, a rapacious clique of uh, fortune seekers forming an organization like Crisis Coalition as four people. And then you say what they have received. Uh, there's nothing bad with it uh, and how they are using it compared to what government has received. Now, in this situation, government receives that money to build the corruption institutions, isn't it? Just like even from the IMF and, and the World Bank and other foreign governments, isn't it? It's government doing so. Because government is the collective steward of every Zimbabwe, isn't it? It does so on every behalf. Now, on whose behalf does Crisis Coalition does that? Or on whose behalf does, does Musa King's government, his organization does that? It is for the exclusive interest of that organization, isn't it? The human rights, the money that human rights go for hmm? or CSU receives, or that Justin M. Koko uses for his uh, ZPP propaganda activities aimed at ZPP receives, does not, is not received on my behalf, I must say. And I must say it is received exclusively for her own benefit and her own purposes. And that is why, over and above all, this man has been susceptible and vulnerable to abuse by this rapacious clique of fortune seekers forming those organizations. It is because no one has been holding them to account. I can point out crisis coalition, MTML, Vajit, Mariania, Mala Piwa, Kutumuneta Zagat Magaite. Amona, a combo and of my NGOs, to my teenagers, youth development trust, my take my youth, youth empowerment trust. Of course, those I think we are doing better, far much better than anyone else in the civil society. When I say, in my era, voter education they are doing, we see them every day. When I hear a single bit, there is voter registration and education, more quit a reward. But you are a good child, the good is a blessed good. Imimi ya mapiwa oyo oyo maita erezo mbuku na kutu mapiwa oyo waite u. Accountability does not mean that only government or public officials are accountable. You also need to be accountable to your viewers and listeners on this platform. Don't you desire to be that? Hmm? No, there is no NGO formed to make you accountable, bless it, to your, to, your, to your clients like us. But you desire to do so, isn't it? And most of the times you are seen to be doing so and thank you for that. The NGOs don't want that. We have laws that regulate the media and journalists here, isn't it? They are very clear. You know what you should do, what you should not do. Now, the NGOs want to be freelance. There were organizations, uh, I'll give an example. Organizations that were funding demonstrations at the University of Zimbabwe and other universities in the country, you know. Zinas was receiving money from SAI. The Student Solidarity Trust was receiving money from USA, DSI, and the, the, the Oxfam, and so forth, and others, isn't it? You know that was done. That you should know, because even at the time when you were active in Zanas, the same was happening. Do, do you know that? Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me quickly respond to my brother so that you understand. The reason why, as a Citizens Coalition for Change, we have taken a position against the bill is not because of our direct engagement and benefit whatever he thinks exists between no, no, sorry, the... Sorry, briefly. I didn't mean to say you benefit. I'm saying, what can, can the public or all the students, the thousands of students, 
account for the usage of the money that you receive from sign from donor organizations. Okay. No one. Not all of them. I don't actually. look. So these are things that I'm saying, was tell us. You don't know because no one is was holding you to be accountable. Look, you look. Now look. To let me, let me, let me help be my brother. Accountable, which is good. okay. Why let me, let me help you. I don't speak on behalf of non-governmental organization. I can only raise a, pro, a principle, Do you wish a value. But, but can, can I be my, protected? My, my question, my question, can I be yeah. protected my first? Question, because question, it's got ample yeah, time. Yeah, we, but, we, but, we see but, this uh, kind my, of... Uh, my, my, my question was... My question I'll, was I'll respond to uh, that. He, he made allegations that you know. Uh, I'll respond I to wanted, that. I wanted you to... Uh, I'll, to I'll, respond I'll, I'll respond to that. But I, I hope you'll give me sufficient yeah. time. Because I've always, I've always the reason why that. I don't go to ZBC is because they will get him uh, uh, ample time to, to speak without us. You the know, so... Are listening. Next time so, you don't go, they know you don't want to. So I, I, don't, I, 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 I don't, people, I don't, don't go to institutions with a right, political let us, objective. Let us, let us not talk about... Uh, look, uh, look, <laughs> they, they, are, they okay. suffer the same accusation of uh, having a political agenda. So to us, they are political competitors because they push a political agenda. I've said this so that my brother understand. What I'm submitting, what Triple C has said, is an issue of a principle, a value of freedom, a value of principle. Principle which is not just our own institutional value. It's informed by the constitution of this country. That government must be held accountable. Organization must have their autonomy, must be able to operate freely outside political influence. Because what we have at this present juncture is to take institutions that are private and public and hand them over under a ministry, a ministry with a defined political objective to be able to criminalize, to be able to bastardize any civil society organizations that are perceived to be anti-Azanpev and anti-government. So what we have submitted are not direct uh, interest as one would want to put are issues of principles and values that we value freedom we value democracy we value accountability let those who are called whether they are questioning government or they are questioning triple c let them have their freedom to question let them have their right to question the existing government and it's very unfortunate he wants to strike as i've said moral equivalence between corruption or corrupt activities in non-governmental organization and huge state corruption also, in this country. I, I, I never said they are condemnable. I said, I said the priorities of government, which he belongs to, are extremely, are extremely, are you, are, but you have, you have authority to be spoken on behalf of government position. ZANU PF's priorities are extremely misplaced. As I've said, and I continuously said this, because they want to strike moral equivalence that uh, Musa Kika uh, uh, stole this, so government should, as I've said to you, there is a court in law in this country. Andrew Shaw was caught with gold, was caught with gold in the airport of this country. The drug scandal in this country, that the Auditor General's report is so revealing about government corrupt activities, which he knows, but you would escape because you would say, point them out. They are well known, they are well documented. The public order Jesus report is so shocking, my brother. And it's unfortunate because he says that is what eh, these are substantive issues that are there on the ground. And I also want to help him, as I've said, I don't speak here on behalf of myself. I don't speak on, on behalf of uh, my association with certain institutions. I speak on behalf of the citizens' uh, coalition for change. I, I no, let me. Let, let me let me finish. Let, can I be protected? Let me be protected. Yes, because he had ample time to speak uh, his views. And, and I, I, I continuously say this, that uh, the debate and discourse is not about certain individuals in institutions of which are said to be private, voluntary organizations. It's a bill which is going to affect everyone. It's a bill which is ultra virus. The provisions of the constitution Where? It, it, it violates the freedom of organization to question government 
Because the government is escaping. The government is accounting. Let me continue. I didn't interject here. Uh, unless, uh, uh, let me be, so that I can finish. You have, yeah, you have, yeah, you have the right. You must have the right to, to respond. As I've said to you, as, as far as I'm reading it, the PVO bill is government, as I've said, escaping uh, accountability. Is government criminalizing deliberate and he knows them that's why i'm happy that he has uh, reviewed certain institutions that zanupf is seemingly afraid of that zanupf is not happy about their existence that's why he is able to say such institutions are working well and these ones are not working well and the attack is directly on institutions whose primary role is que is to question government whose primary role is to make sure that when a vice president of ZANU-PF says we must quash uh, uh, people who are questioning government like lies, says it in a public event of ZANU-PF, and what happens 24 hours is that uh, uh, there is violence instigated by ZANU-PF members. When people question that, when organizations which are formed to protect the vulnerable, to protect the oppressed, when such organization question government, government criminalizes them. Government wants them to be arrested. Government wants them to be fined. Government wants them to be shut down. That is what the PVO bill is all about. It's all about criminalizing dissent. It's all about making sure those that are perceived to be against the government to be attacked. We are also going to be in government. These organizations must have their freedom to question government. This organization must have their freedom to question public officials because they must be able to account to the people. And people do so through existing in private voluntary organization. But government can't escape that. Government can't criminalize that because that is provided for by law. Protection of people to be able to question government, to be able to hold public officials to account. But they don't want to do so. Why? Why, to, why does ZANU, uh, uh, it has got a history of violence. Zan has, let me conclude. ZANU has got a history of violence. Soon after independence, ZANU unleashed violence against uh, 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 people in Matebele. In 2008, ZANU unleashed violence against ordinary people. ZANU is the number one perpetrator of violence in this country. Number one violator of human rights. What is their uh, uh, problem? Those that question their motors operant, those that question their abduction activities, those that question their nefarious fascist tendencies are supposed to be shut down. It's a clear agenda to create a de facto one-party state. It's a clear agenda to thwart democratic consent. It's a clear agenda to make sure that no one questions, particularly those activities that are done by government, which must be swept under the carpet. Okay, I'll allow you to, to, to respond before we wrap up. I really need to be patient, and I'm glad I have just attended there. Uh, so, if my regulations are put in place to uh, allow NGOs to exist within their parameters and do their work as it will, uh, those regulations to are akin to uh, developing a one-party state. That has always been Zanu and Nangakwa's agenda. What is the political formation called the crisis in Zimbabwe coalition? What is the political formation called the Human Rights Go Forum or ERC or this? You see, you seek to defend them, but you confuse them with what exactly they should be vis-a-vis -vis what they are. How does the regulations on the, how do regulations on the, actually on the NGOs translate to a one-party state? Are you saying, are you suggesting synonymousness? between your, your political opposition groups in the, the civil society, such that when regulations are put on the other, then it's now a one-party state. Is that the reason why we have failed to come up with a succinct and a definitive substantive political structures as a political organization and now exist at the level of the standing committee alone, where people appoint and disappoint each other on a daily basis? So in, to the extent that one then will be uh, Pardoned to believe that are you suggesting that you, the structures of your party are in civil society such that when regulations are put there it affects you you run out of oxygen anyway the issues of Kukura Hundi are talking about I'm sure uh, those who are affected by it uh, 
have uh, spoken themselves up and they've been given an opportunity, bless you, to, to speak their views and uh, they're engaging government at the level of the NPRC as a, a, a gesture taken by the president, Kumedi Dimnanka, when we are proud of that. But to see this generation, the generation of Ostalos and myself, you know, the issue of Gukura wound, uh, there is a deliberate attempt to scandalize and make it an electioneering issue, playing with people's uh, emotions about it. And that is why it is always ramped up ahead of elections or on these convenient political discussions by others. Who feels that because that era happened, it must benefit them by way of votes of fortune from that side of uh, the country, which is the southern provinces. I'm sure those who are affected by it and those who are seized with it, the chiefs, uh, the young people there, do not like the manner in which this debate is being engaged by our brothers from the opposition. This is an issue that is emotions, and those with such emotions do not want their emotions to be abused for election. But that's an absolute lie. And let us just stop there. We should not discuss certain issues for the respect, at least, of both those who are victims and those who are handling the process with final conclusion. Let us not try to electioneer on issues that affect them. It's quite very bad. If you were a victim, you will know how bad it is to try to score. Why is the issue not being resolved? It's a, it's a very... Look, look, let me help. Can, 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 can you allow myself to be clear there? These are fundamental national processes involving a people. Let us never electioneer on them. Who are those people? Let's do that. Now, uh, in short, as we, you said, blessed, we are wrapping up. The PVO Act will be coming by. Uh, it, like my brother said, it refused to own his past. I do. That's what it is. There is not any part of my past that I'm not ready to account before the public. You grew up in the same organization that I were in the nurse that isn't, isn't that so? You know what was happening there? You, I have asked you how many students can testify even in this platform how, how you used the funds that were coming to the nurse, all of you. Well, I'll respond to that once and for all. No yeah, one, I need to respond. No student can do that. He can respond, but no one, no other students can do because those two mechanisms were there to put the students to make them account. Because and it, I also tell you but at some point in time, myself and the and the brother in the R2s opened Masarauri. I think about 5,000 dead. I'm being honest, blessing. You bring him on this platform. I'm not lying. Mario, no one asked us to account because there were no mechanisms. You have to go to the hospital. You have to go to the hospital. You have to go to the hospital. You have to go to the And that's a fact. It's quite unfortunate. It's still doing. Yeah, no, no, not doing as such, but I think it's still in those NGOs. I hope for reformed reasons now. But these things I'm telling, blessed. I can't be stupid to come and own up to what how we did things in the past. You could ask a white person who was called John Stewart. Then he would tell you what used to happen. My brother knows that, but he still insists that these organisations must hold government to account. Themselves must not be held to account. That's according to him, because according to him, like he said, corruption among them exists, but it is lesser than what he deduces or what he alleges is corruption in government. <laughs> our president and ourselves as Zambia, zero tolerance to corruption <laughs> is our approach, and everyone that has been found wanting must kill their cross. Recently, you know, when the minister yesterday we were probing the, the NPC about it, Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Carol, was a was severed from, from government as a deputy minister, isn't it? Measures being taken. But we just don't take measures out of what air. We take measures out of tangible evidence. Not that, ah, so and so and so and so. The minister who was involved in the drugs issue that he has spoken about, Obadiah, where is he? You know what happened to him? We took measures. Except them cannot take measures about the rotted townhouse, where their, their councillors are known have turned into land barons and baroness, every one of them, and they have issues before the courts. And when they are arrested for him, it's a human rights issue. When they are arrested for corruption, 
They don't say any word. It's harassment. That's according to them. No, blessed. The organizations, NGOs, must be ready to be accountable in as much as they want others to, to be accountable. Right. It is let me, as clear can, as that. Let yeah, me, can you respond to the issue? Let me, let me quickly, yes, quickly, let me quickly respond yes. to that. Look, I was born politically out of the Students' Union. I left the University of Zimbabwe. And that's a historical uh, fact. And I led with distinction and clarity as, vice um, as the vice president of the Students' Union. And leading the UN, I never received a cent uh, from anyone to advance uh, my cause. And it was clear when I was in Students' Union with certain specific issues against the then administration as was led by Professor Nyagura. Um, how they were doing their politics in the Students' Union. Those who know, uh, know uh, very well that we're a bit uh, separate from the existence or activities of the National Students' Union. And he knows this for a fact, that even our election into the student leadership was not uh, political, political in terms of the political and moral support spearheaded by the Students' Union itself. Um, and we led a clean uh, a fight against the administration in terms of advancement uh, we actually had a demonstration at the University of Zimbabwe. You might disagree, you which is okay. You can, you, you can say whatever you want to say. I've said it. I was the vice president of the Students' Union. I was clear on my objective. And I didn't want to come here and speak on my own behalf. Because I speak on behalf of the institution. And I don't want to deviate from the concrete discourse that is facing our country into such petty historical narratives of the Students' Union. But I, I've said, I've said, I've said, my life in the Students' Union is out there. For those who existed within the Students' Union, know of a fact that we waged a collective fight for academic freedom and rights for students at the time. And we left the Students' Union. Now come to this issue. I have said, we have said as C government, our objections against... Can I be protected? Our objections, our objection against uh, a government in waiting, we're an alternative. And we can't be wished away. Zanu has sponsored uh, millions for them to wish us away from politics. Uh, they tweeted, sponsored, funded a uh, uh, political outfit, wanting to wish us away from the political scene in this country. We can't be wished away. The Triple C is the go next government in this country. And he knows this, my brother. Um, so, so, so now, the bill, as I've said, we have objected against the bill on the basis of a principle. We don't say NGOs must not be held to account. We say NGOs must be held to account. And government now should not, as I've said, it's about priorities. That a whole government focuses on minute polit institutions uh, like uh, non-governmental organizations and leave huge corruption activities happening at the watch, support and involvement of government, including Mr. Mnangakwa himself. And I want to say this, my brother, to you for clarity's sake, that when we raise concrete issues, uh, what is affecting our people, when we raise them, the objective and intention is to make sure that these issues are resolved. When we raise the issue that he thinks that is politicking about Kukuraund, my direct relatives, my direct family was affected by Zanu sponsoring and supporting an initiative of Kukuraund. And we know we are actually our relatives and family are involved in the current process that are being done by the MPRC. We've even raised our issues to the uh, commission, how it is insufficient to resolve issues of past injustice. The fundamental departure that we have with ZAN on resolving these issues is about how these institutions are driven, how these processes are being done, whether uh, to them, is, to us, it's not about scoring political fortunes. To us, it's about justice. To us, it's about clearly defining who is the perpetrator, who did what, when and how. Those are key questions about resolving past cases of injustice in our country. And you know that whenever the government is number one perpetrator, 
the objective and the intention and program always is to sweep key national questions under the carpet. And my brother attempts here to do so, to try and sweep issues that are concrete in this country so that we focus on minor issues. Non-governmental organizations are not political parties. As I've said, I don't speak on their behalf. I don't, I don't, I don't worry. I don't worry whether the PVO bill is enacted into law to thwart existence of non-governmental organizations. We have set a principle so that history absolves the, co the citizens' coalition for articulating clearly and rejecting any bill that comes to try and thwart democratic space. We have said it very clear. But Even if the bill we, who we, say it doesn't have, work on our have, advantage, have, have, democratic consent must be supported, rights of organization must we, be supported, and this organization must be protected. And we are doing our moral and political duty. Now, we have, we have just run out of time, but um, I will allow you... Uh, both of you to have closing remarks, but in those closing remarks, I want to, the reading of Parliament. Actually, the committee uh, recommendation says that here yeah, on six two that the committee recommend the committee made the following recommendation six point two the cancellation of a certificate or a license of NPVO that deliberately fails to stick to its mandate or participate in. Politics. Now, this is one of the recommendations that have been made. I will uh, give you an opportunity to in close to close just two minutes, uh, Mr. Mgwadi. Uh, what does this recommendation, if passed, help to achieve or to stop um, if it is passed? I'm sure the, I'm just saying the recommendation doesn't affect the responsibility of all these non-government organizations to be accountable themselves. The key question is accountability. It's accountability. No person can say because I'm an NGO or because I'm a political organization. And you think we, you have a shallow appreciation of NGOs. You say they were formed to make government accountable. No, including even opposition political parties as well. Everyone, public officials, in or out of government, must be accountable. Precise. The actions, isn't it? Yes. So why would you speak as if government, only government needs Because you are the one running scared. The reason why he speaks eloquently about only government being accountable and not them is because you know what they do when they run out of coffers or groceries at home they go about uh, publicizing go fund me programs and abuse the money from unsuspecting sympathizers of their political organization they have done that several times using checkered elements and in the process none of the same day they accounted to the members of their own party they want to talk about national accountability they have no moral standing or moral high ground to do that. I can go in and on and give the, the examples, including those that implicates him as an as <laughs> And he knows that in their... I don't want to personalize the debate, but you know, you have faced a barrage of attacks from your organization. Then in the Youth League and your association... You I've never been to the Youth League. In the, oh, you well, I used to be in the Youth Assembly. Yes, that's your... You don't have such... Uh, uh, because of that, you are just things. trying to dodge the responsibility of what I'm talking about. But you know it happened, whether it was a fact or not. But that, as an organization called the CCC or MDC Alliance, then you were not accountable to any one of your members, and that issue has caused a lot I'll of noise. I'll respond to that. It's the rank and file of yourself. So, in short, it was not surprising throughout this debate while you were dodging the question of accountability. You think only Zanpiv needs to be accountable. You think only government needs to be accountable. You even go on to peddle a false lie that President Nangagwa himself is implicated in corruption. That's according to you. Yes. That's according to you. Hmm? All right. Uh, we are running out of time. Your, your two minutes. Let, let me help my brother. Number one. In we, conclusion. Thank you. Yes, in conclusion, Triple C accounts. This, the, the, this section of thank you. recommendations. What thank does you. It do, um, the, 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 the number one I've said, so that my brother understands, ZANU has not accounted to anyone, even for I've said, for their perpetration and violence, violation of human rights. They, they've never accounted. They've, it's only him in ZANU. This is the funny thing. Only Tafazo Mgwadi from ZANU PF is accounted for his past. Not Mr. Mnangagwa, not anyone in ZAN. So only him, as the director of information, is accounted for his past. Not anyone in ZAN PF, which is very shocking. Number two, as a citizens' coalition for change, we account to our members. Those who have supported the movement, those who belong to the movement, those who have been to the movement are aware of every decision that we make, are aware of our expenditure. 
Zanu now, what it has done, it has attempted deliberately to try and create fake supporters for the Triple C movement so that they question, uh, say, no, we want you to account uh, to us. We are, not, we are not stupid. We are not naive. We have learned from the past. We know the intentions of ZAN. We know ZAN PF's behavior. Number three, we have never said ZAN must account to, to CBC. Let them account to ordinary people. They are in government. Number four, ZAN, what uh, uh, my brother is trying to clean here. ZAN, he has never, he has said, it's only him, Tafaso Mkwad, from ZAN, who has accounted for his past. Not anyone in ZANPF is accounted, and I don't want to go into see, individual listen, details the book of, the can, the book can I be protected so that I conclude? Can I, can I, can I, can I conclude? 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 You know all Can I conclude? Can I conclude? Can I conclude? Can we, can we, can we have a debate on these issues on another platform? Here we're talking about the people. PVOs, and I'm See, just asking for your conclusion. You Can we just have that? As I conclude, the PVO bill, uh, the part that you have ended with, sent us the power to cancel certificates into the hands of uh, the minister, which we have said is very problematic because when they consider that they are dangling into politics, it is the prerogative of the minister to then cancel the certificate of non governmental organization, which we have said, in our view, is limited and is problematic because to them anyone who dangles in politics is anyone who dares question ZANPF. Let everyone, let government account, let triple C account, let NGOs account, let journalists account, let every Zimbabwean account, beginning and starting with government, let government account to the people, let government be questioned, let's have ordinary people Non-governmental organizations, civil society, opposition, and even members of ZAN question ZAN. Let's not allow and let's not strike political before. equivalence between existing uh, uh, organizations and ZAN. ZAN has been corrupt, he has accounted nothing to ordinary people. They've stolen from the public and they've not accounted. That's why they want to make sure that they thwart organizations that question their behavior and conduct. I thank you, thank, my brother. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for, for this uh, amazing discussion that we had. We had invited the Honorable Temba Mlis, who was supposed to join us, but unfortunately he has traveled to uh, Kenya on, uh, uh, on parliamentary business, so we, we understand. But um, uh, all the same, thank you very much, Director um, of, of Information from ZANU-PF, and thank you very much, Ostalo Siziva, the Deputy Spokesperson of the CCC, here on this, the program, the Free Talk, in proud partnership uh, with the Frederick Newman Foundation, Frederick Newman Stuftang. Our motto here is free is speech. Well? <laughs> Our motto here is that free speech is very, very important. People should be allowed to be heard and to hear. And as you said, uh, Director, as a station, we are accountable to our publics. We are accountable to U.S. political parties as well. We are accountable to everyone who listens and chimes in to Heart and Soul TV and radio. We give everyone a voice, especially on this, the free talk with me, your host as usual, and always, Dara, blessed Mshlanga. We believe Zimbabwe should be built and will be built by Zimbabweans, all talking to each other, regardless of their, their differences. Yes, sure. Thank you very much. This is the free talk in proud partnership with the Frederick Newman Foundation here on Heart and Soul TV and Radio. Until next time, please don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel, HSTV Zim, or like our Facebook uh, page, H Heart and Soul Zim, or like and follow our Twitter handle, at HSTV News. As always, Dara is out.